welcome to this presentation. Uh, my name is Tom Buckley. I work as a senior learning technologist in the education innovation team. And I wanted to put together just a short kind of presentation for people who have been asked to support a lecture capture or an event capture. Now there's various technical things that you'll have to learn uh, when doing this kind of process. But from my own experiences, there's other, one or two other things that you can uh, focus on or just concentrate on. And I'll cover those things within this presentation. And if you do these things, it'll mean that you get the most out of the experience that you possibly can. So this presentation will go through the pre-session checks needed to maximize the utility of your event capture. And this is aimed at users of Panopto at UE um, and users in an event support capacity. So before watching this, you should really have some experience of using Panopto and you should have some experience of using the uh, technologies in the teaching rooms in the University of the West of England. So within this presentation, we will cover how to tweak the sound for your presenter and how to manage the camera feed of the presenter. And uh, these are really, really important for getting a good product at the end of it. And they're things that you can't really do much about in post hoc editing. So it's really important to get a good run up and do these a few little things uh, and you should be able to get the best product possible. So before the event, what do you need to do before the event? So this is before the day of the event. You'll need to know what the room is like. OK, so where's the light coming from? Is there noise pollution coming from fans outside? Is there Wi-Fi in the room? Is there a camera, a static camera already installed? There is Panopto on the machines. Now, for 2017-18, we can kind of assume that uh, there will be Panopto within all the teaching rooms, but maybe it's not got a, maybe it's not technically a teaching room. Maybe it's a meeting room. Uh, maybe it's got no IT equipment in it, and it's just an ad hoc kind of thing that you'll have to capture. You can still do it using Panopto, but you'll need to know that information with enough time to do something about it. Um, you need to pack a webcam for the event, and we'll come on to why. As a learning technologist now, really, you should be packing a webcam wherever you go. should be uh, in your utility belt, your toolkit of the things that you have on you. You'll never know when you use it, need it. Uh, they're always useful. Before the event, you'll also need to ensure, it may not be your responsibility, but you'll need to ensure that the relevant people have been briefed about the recording happening and also the nature of the online audience. So you need to know that when you get there, the presenter will know they're being recorded and will be happy with it and that they have understood the risks of doing an online presentation. Now, this could be broadcast live. It could be uh, recorded for posterity. And there are slightly um, skew if kind of rules to do with copyright and everything, which means the risk profile of doing each one of those things is slightly different or even recording it at all. Um, but we would need to ensure that presenters or lecturers have uh, been making informed choices when putting together their presentation so they know that what they're giving is kind of within the parameters of legislation but also if it's being live broadcast maybe there's some uh, research that's not been published yet um, they might need to alert you to that fact and uh, say I need this bit snipped out before it goes public also for the audience they might want to have the ability to um, to opt out of this kind of process. Now there is a few quirks with the uh, Panopto as we know it will continue to record even when you pause it as a fail safe option so uh, we need to bear that in mind when we're taking audience questions for people that said I definitely do not want to be recorded uh, and in small teaching rooms the uh, webcams are set up with a kind of omni field around them so it records all around them um, so actually we can pick up audience discussion albeit at a slightly terrible sound quality um, so we will need to be mindful of those kind of conversations and we need to uh, give uh, everyone that's involved the, the option to opt in opt out or reframe what they're doing for the event um, you also need to know before the event whether you're doing a webcast or not because uh, there might be some good practice which you can see in a different video about how to do a webcast successfully which you wouldn't need to worry about for uh, for a live for a non-live recording so if you're recording it for students to watch at a later date you can do stuff in post editing you can do stuff with different feeds feeding into it you can have a HD camera at the back of the room and you could layer that into it so you've got a nicer feed if you're doing it for a webcast, uh, for a webcast, you may want to 
also dial down the quality of the, uh, the feeds that you're streaming to make it uh, more user friendly for, uh, for bandwidth kind of reasons and you might not want to do that if you were just recording it straight off the bat to uh, to um, edit at a later date so you need to be aware of all these things on the actual day uh, I thoroughly recommend meeting with the presenters before the time allotted uh, so it might be um, the morning of the hour before 10 minutes before they get there you'll need to have a conversation with them and understand how they intend to behave during the presentation that sounds really weird they're not going to be kind of uh, truculent they're not going to be arrogant they're not looking for that kind of behaviors what you're looking for is where's their field of movement where is the furthest they're going to go where's the, the what's the volume they're going to speak at are they going to use the visualizer are they going to use some kind of in-class things that we could try and capture some kind of audience participation from that you can set up the sound levels and you can set up cameras for the logical shots of the presenter uh, and also you can both take responsibility for the recording and the recording environment so you can say okay we've discussed about how you're going to move I've set the camera up uh, you now need to watch that tile on the floor if you go ahead of that tile that means you're out of shot okay this is your product do you want that bin in the background? Do you want that poster in the background? Do you want to be showing all your bags and stuff? No? Okay, well, let's take responsibility for that environment together. Uh, it's really useful and uh, it will allow you to accommodate their behavior. The first part of accommodating uh, the presenter behavior is the sound test. Um, sound tests will allow you to decide what microphone you're going to need. Are you going to need the wireless mic pack? Are you going to just be able to go on the lectern microphone? Um, the lectern microphone is often selected, but you know it's it, it's static. It's not going to move around with the presenter. So if they are going to just move around, take questions, sit from water, go and stand next to the wall and point up at the screen, you may probably be better off with the wireless mic. Then that means when you go to further towards the sound test, you've got them mic'd up, you've got them in position, and you can then make sure that you've got the right microphone selected. So this audio option here um, is a drop down, and with the more complicated lecture theatres, that drop down will, con will contain many different things, especially if you've added some webcams. It'll contain many different videos, feeds uh, with audio on, and it'll be asking you which one of these do you want me to which one of these do you want me to actually um, record off? So you need to make sure that the one you're using is the one that you kind of have set up. Now you'll be looking to discount the brand name webcams if you're not using their audio. So you'll be able to see, oh, Polycom, no, that's not mine. Sony, no, that's not the one I'm looking for. Or something, be something like Real Deck or Line In or some kind of um, other audio feed. You'll be able to see uh, if it's a live audio feed or not because you'll start to get these levels here going up and down um, uh, as it receives audio. So make sure you're testing the right microphone. Make sure you're testing the right recording volume. Uh, everyone will speak when they're presenting a little bit louder, a little bit faster, a little bit more bubbly. Um, so when you uh, get the presenter to do a short part of their presentation, maybe you'll record it maybe you won't um, what you need to really monitor is this bar here because if it goes anywhere to towards the yellow when they get louder or uh, if it goes into the red even that means your sound quality is irreparably damaged so you need to make sure that this bar is as close probably to here as you possibly can get because um, if it goes into the red, it'll do something called clipping, and that's when someone shouts and it sounds like someone's slapping a baking tray on the table. So you want it, every quiet bit and loud bit to be within this kind of green area here. Uh, we can do things with quiet sound, we can make it louder, we can cut some noise out of it, uh, but if it clips, you can't do anything at all. So it's really important to get them to be a realistic when they're testing it. And set the re the sound volume together accordingly. Uh, otherwise, uh, without audio, you might as well not be doing this. 
The next behavior that you're going to have to manage is um, where to set the cameras up to capture the presentation that's being given. Now you'll see in teaching rooms uh, now if you most of them you look up to the ceiling there'll be something like this this kind of black thing here that's a webcam hanging from a ceiling um, something reasonably lightweight something quite uh, nice and high value for how much it costs um, it has a static field I mean there are some webcams you can change but it's probably not worth doing it you could don't want to pan and zoom and then ruin someone else's shot a bit later but the, the field of vision from the webcam on the ceiling will be looking at the lectern here. And you'll get a, a shot that's something like this. Um, so this one, uh, you'll see, was if you have someone that is using the lectern mic, uh, this shot will do. This shot will be fine. Um, all you need to then worry about is making sure the video quality here is high. Or ultra or whatever you quality you need and making sure these kind of parameters are are acceptable things like frames per second and kilobytes those kind of things will will slow down any live webcasts you have and they'll uh, eat into the memory a little bit but you know Panopto is hosted externally so you don't really need to worry about that too much um, so if someone's uh, going to present from the lectern that shots all right that shot's fine. Um, but most of the case, we get something called uh, a lectern capture. So most of the time, we get something called lectern capture, which is when you have this shot and you have the audio's fine and the presentation's fine and it's progressing, but you've got just a lonely shot of an empty lectern and maybe the side of a, a man or a woman will just come into view every now and again. Because in reality, someone's over there um presenting from the other side of the room no one likes to have a barrier in between them and the audience no one genuinely wants to stand behind a lectern so more than likely they'll have a, a slide put advancer in their hands and they'll be going around more naturally talking to people what we can do about this is add another video source so this shot you can still capture uh, but you can add another source of video. So you're actually capturing not only the static shot of when someone's behind the lectern, you can take a webcam and set another shot to accommodate the presenter's behavior. So using any of the plethora of USB sockets, either on the machine, on the screen, or on the dashboard on the lectern, you can actually, you've got quite a lot of uh, leeway to place your own webcam in a stable position uh, to accommodate presenter behavior. So here are some examples from uh, the, our teaching equipment we have at UE. You can plug it into the screen and use it on the visualizer. See this, that's the thing uh, we call the visualizer. Uh, we can then Stand next to it here and you'll see this eye of Sauron looking at you from the lectern and give you a reasonably steady picture, reasonably straight picture. Or you could use the screen, which is probably the most useful. So this one is um, here. I think this is plugged into the screen. We'll move around with the screen. And as I said, no one likes to present with a barrier in between them and their audience. So more than likely, if they are a, a decent presenter, they will have moved the screen out anyway to allow them to be uh, talking directly to the class but still see the PowerPoint slides without turning around. So this will give, give them a field of vision on the screen and the camera field of vision on the presenter. So it's a kind of win-win. You can even turn the screen out further. And that means you can start capturing stuff like this, like seminar activity. Uh, the microphones again are quite good. It's not gonna be like uh, last night of the problems audio quality from a webcam but you can pick up a lot of the conversation for posterity so uh, it gives you loads of options to actually set up a secondary field and what you can do afterwards um, it, well during and afterwards it allows you the student or any consumer to go down here and select different options depending what they want to see at any time so if you wanted to be quite uh, lightweight you could say all right all the streams are up there go watch the thing 
and you manage when you want to see the student's view and when you want to see the presenter view or when you want to see, in this case, the static view of the fire hydrant or Steve Neal. Um, so they can do that by selecting down here. But if you're looking at a final product, you can do in editing, um, you can change the focus between um, uh, between the second or the primary feed and then maybe you'll get whatever's on the screen but then you could swap between that one and change the focus to somewhere all using some all using panopto so the final product will switch between different feeds depending on what you've said is the focus at that point in the talk which is actually pretty phenomenal so the more feeds you have the more options you have in editing afterwards uh, thank you for listening to me, Burbalon. I hope that was useful. It was more of a kind of how do we practically leverage uh, the lecture capture setup we have here because it's a great system, um, but generally lectures happen in kind of different ways in different places and uh, and everyone has different slightly different needs from it. Um, so I hope that's useful for you going forward. Uh, this is the team, Education Innovation Team. I know you can find this on YouTube because you're watching this video. But um, if you want to follow us on Twitter, please uh, add us at EdInnovationHass. And uh, I wish you the best of luck supporting event captures in the future.